Hi everyone, Steve3PO here, and today I'm making a vacuum forming machine. These are great for making molds, costumes, masks, product packaging, and practically anything you want to turn into plastic forms. I showed you how to turn foam into brass with the Seahawks keychains. Now I'll show you how to turn practically anything into plastic. My machine consists of four main components. A vacuum, shop vac or any other vacuum will do, a suction bed, a sheet retaining frame, and a heating element. My heating element is an ink flash dryer that I use for my silk screening operations. If you're serious about vacuum forming, these flash dryers are pretty ideal and can be found on Amazon for about 150 bucks. So let's get right to it. I'm using half inch medium density fiberboard or MDF for my suction bed and I modeled the size after the aluminum screen printing frames which I have just lying around. The bed size is about 15 inches by 17 inches. It's pretty large for a hobby vacuum form. I'm using the inside of the frame as a guide and cut off the excess. I don't have a table saw, so I had to use clamps and straight pieces to guide my circular saw for accuracy. Next, I drilled and jigged out a frame to fit over the suction bed I just cut. The frames are identical dimensions and should be clamped together while holes are drilled for bolts and pole pass-throughs. I have to keep Atlas entertained. Let's count how many times an unidentified rolling object comes into view while I'm cutting these strips. I'm cutting two strips of 17 inch by 3 inch and two strips of 14 inch by 3 inch pieces for the suction box. Here I'm using the spindle sander to smooth out the top and the bottom edges of the box strips. Regular sandpaper will work, I'm just very impatient. Steve, you're the best. Why you gotta be so sexy? I just am, baby. Actually, I think she said the trash still needs to go out, but I hear what I want here. Here, I'm using tight bond wood glue and 18 gauge nails to secure and tack on the strips to the suction bed. Atlas is deeply offended when I use the nail gun. He gets plenty of treats afterwards though. I'm making lines for a grid, both to guide the hour of drilling I'm gonna have to do, and for a reference grid later on. And next, of course, the holes. Check out the sun line. Now it's time to seal up the nooks and the crannies with caulk, the crannies especially. The suction bed still needs a hole for the actual vacuum. Now I'm gluing down the box to my baseboard and I'm using some heavy materials to weigh it down while it sets. I made the baseboard a standard three inches on all sides so I can measure and nail in the suction box permanently. Again, the dog takes exception to pneumatic tools. Here I'm caulking from the outside of the suction box and baseboard and definitely get the vacuum tube with the caulk. I pirated an extra vacuum extension tube for the box interface. Since I'm using a downward radiating flash dryer, I wanted a different type of design. I pictured the sheet retainer frame sliding down poles from a suspended fixture just under the flash dryer. That way, I could release latches and put it right down on the suction bed. 
What I'm doing here is cutting standoffs to keep the frame just below the bed once it's lowered. I did a stacked standoff design because, well, I screwed up. I was originally going to use an aluminum frame for the top part of the sheet retainer, but have you heard aluminum scraping down the side of steel? It's awful. So I switched to an all MDF frame. It's easy to work with and easy to replace after lots of use and the neighbors and dogs and children and wife don't complain about the sound. The steel tubes are going to sit in the drill dot blocks. I drilled just enough of an indent in the baseboard to allow the tubes to stand up on their own. Then I slide the blocks down and glue them to the base. I did nail all these in as well. I had to fuss over the fitting for a bit, but after some adjustments, I anchored everything in. Here's the all MDF frame. I'm making sure both frames holes line up well because they will clamp together using bolts, washers, and wing nuts. All I have to do is drill a couple of small holes in opposing corners of the aluminum crown frame and screw these brackets in. I'm using a couple steel mending plates for my suspension brackets. They'll hold up the sheet retainer frame while it's heating and flip out of the way when I go to lower the hot plastic sheet onto the suction bed. Polystyrene and ABS are the staples of vacuum forming, so I ordered several sheets. I cut them to a quarter of an inch wider than the suction bed on all sides and clamped them into the sheet retainer frame. Perfect fit! Polystyrene has some weird properties while it's being heated, but at around 350 degrees Fahrenheit, at least according to my cheap infrared thermometer, it evens out and starts sagging in the middle. This is when it's time to put it down on the suction bed. I'm making some dog biscuit ice cube trays, and I'm gearing up for another project making food grade silicone baking molds, so this demo also serves as a preview. I've got several other projects using this Vacuform machine planned for the near future, so stay tuned to see what we can come up with. And that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, please mash the thumbs up icon, and if you want to keep up to date on my projects, click subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Atlas, what do you think? Good boy.